you lay by the cool river bed with the sweet smell of harvest in the air. Now you stare at the long road ahead like a man with a purpose and a prayer. Lord, it's a struggle with little reward like the rest. You're just here for the ride. It's only a question of which road you choose, win or lose. All that matters is you try. Excuse me. I suppose this is awfully silly of me, but my son's in the Navy, too. A flyer in the Pacific? He's terrible about writing, and I thought just maybe you... I haven't seen Action Man. Well, you're bound to sooner or later. I won't be going overseas, ma'am. Donnie's butt must be in by now. Sissy just can't wait to see him. I don't care if there's got sharper teeth than that far. 
It's eight miles into Burdett from where the bus leaves you off, and three more to get out to our place. Somebody will come along and give them a lift, Claire. Sissy went on ahead. She took Donnie's bike. Don't wait dinner on them, Claire, in case they're late. Donnie's just coming home. It ain't no festive with this. My kid sister, all in bloom with pretty new curves. Oh, you're talking to me. Oh, Sissy, glad you came. When I got off the bus. Well, look here, that's, that's my bike. You learned to ride it. Yeah. Well, you got too much air in them tires, though. Not for two of us riding. All right, throw my duffel bag on here and I'll ride you home. Right up there. God, I hope I still fit. Oh, you will. Here we go. <laughs> you promised you'd write me letters. Nothing wrong with postcards. You wrote letters to Mom and Dad. They were to everybody. I know. But the last two. It's not all mysterious about. I asked why. And all they said was you got some kind of special discharge. I'll tell you all about it sometime. You don't have to. I just couldn't fit in, sissy. Something happened, I got all crack-brained, and I fouled up good. But you was actually up in a plane. I soloed in one. Flew it yourself? Yeah, just two times. I don't know if there's anybody in Burdett ever even been in a plane, let alone flew one. Except in Ace Keverly, of course. Yeah. Oh! oh. Sam Keverly's a Marine. Oh, yeah, I heard. Hey, you, you ever see Janet around? Janet? Janet who? Well, you're trying to be a spot, Alec, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Janet who, she said. With a home name is Janet. The Janet, I mean, don't wear false teeth. Janet Wilmer. Oh, you mean that Janet of the Burdette Wilmer. Come on, sissy. She married or anything? Donnie, I don't know how you're going to take this, but... Well... Well what? Janice working part-time at Cullison's Emporium, and she ain't married or anything! <laughs> I'm going to take out two of your teeth! <laughs> Okay, take your time. Hello, Donnie. I don't approve of what you've done, but I'm a civil man. 
And I plan to keep a civil tongue. Thank you, sir. Frightened. Because, well, I didn't know what to say to you. How much are these? Dollar ninety nine. Guess I still don't know what to say. I want to see you, Janet. Like always. Nothing. It's like always anymore. What did somebody do? Send out a chain letter about me? It was the one you wrote to me. About how they were going to discharge you. What do you mean? My mother accidentally found it. You know how she is. She'd choke to death swallowing good, ripe gossip. Like you getting cashiered out of the Navy. Fletcher. What you doing? Your sister tells me they're shipping you out tomorrow, Corey. You're a phony coward. Kill me if you even saw me in here talking to you. What size do you suppose I wear? Donnie, how about you? I guess this won't be all right. I mean, well, we know how your dad feels. What do I owe you, Janet? Someone's all the reason needed for celebrating. <laughs> you said that to me the night you proposed. It was a happier time, Blair. Oh, Amos. Uh, you know my meaning. Amos. He's our only son. And a lot like him aren't ever coming back. And a lot are with honors pinned to their chest. You know my feeling. I just want it respected, that's all. Does Donnie always have to do just as good as you did? He's got to try. Well, he will. Well, what am I supposed to do in the meantime? Tell him how proud I am that he got kicked out of the Navy? Amos. I really missed 
Здравствуйте. Harvest begins in three weeks. It's going to take a lot of getting ready. It's going to be all right, Donnie. It's going to be all right. miles away don't sound like much to me. Does it to you, Amos? Locusts have been known to fly more than a thousand miles, Claire. But these are hoppers. All the same difference, sissy. It's when they swarms when we call them locusts. Locusts are mentioned in the Bible, too. You come home wearing a uniform. Yes, sir. It's hanging in my closet. After supper, you find a box and paper and mail that back to them. Dad, that don't make much sense. They don't care. You dishonored that uniform. You got no right to it. Locus and right. be a big problem for folks in those parts. Call Mr. Lacey over at the garage. He's going to have to special order that sand belt. John's a forgetful man. You call him up again tomorrow. Yes, sir. Dad? You know, I'm, I'm not sure that my letters were very clear. I mean about why they discharged me. I thought maybe if we just kind of talked it out. How many words do you suppose there are in a bushel? I don't mean to excuse what happened. Just try and explain it. Going got bumpy and you ran. Ain't nothing to explain, Donnie. I've seen it all. See Artie get killed, or how it happened. I've seen a thousand Arties get their guts blown out in France. A thousand die and ain't the same. I never in all my life had a friend as close as Artie. He's like family. Do you know what really needs explaining, Donnie? Is why you ever enlisted in the first place. The government said you was essential to the war effort, working right here on this farm. Thought it'd be something that'd please you. Well, it did. It was the proudest day of my life. But it was the way you took off, without even as much as a goodbye to your mother or sister. Now, just a minute. I'm not finished with you. You was out with Janet Willimer the night you left. Ain't that right? Well, isn't it? I just assume not talk about it. Now, you listen to me, boy. You're living under my roof, eating my food. You damn well better talk about what I want you to. She said she thought... Uh... You ought to be thinking about marrying. How far did you go with
need your ration stamps, Amos. Where's Tina? You got exactly 14 gallons. So that comes to uh, two dollars and uh, fifty-two cents. Here, let me sign it for you, Hank. Where'd you hit these? Up at Twin Boulders. What a mess, Lloyd. Driving home, I ran into a swarm of locusts. How many was it? Uh, not as bad as 31. It wiped out a few fields just south of there. If this heat doesn't break... I say it will, Lloyd. Tomorrow, probably. Hey, Miss. How's Donnie? Uh, he's home, Hank. Well, Dad, your boy Sam hasn't won back any of those Pacific Islands yet. But that don't mean I haven't chalked up a few personal victories. <laughs> <laughs> your boy sure writes a racy letter, that's for certain. The word's around that we'll all be seeing some real action soon. I know you wanted to see me carry on the family tradition and be a pilot. Amos, uh, but I'm sorry, Amos. I didn't see you come in. That's all right, Ace. You don't owe me an apology. You just give Sam my best wishes the next time you write to him. I sure will do that, Amos. Cully, you heard anything about Locust? No. Jim? Well, I heard on the farm report there was a swarm uh, that chewed up 20 acres over by Twin Boulders. Well, that adds up, because these hot air currents have been coming from south of here. Weather's well, been hotter and drier than it has been in a dozen years. How's your supply of sodium arsenide? What average? I think we better get most of it over to Ace's place and get it loaded onto his airplane. Ace and his plane, sodium arsenide. You're talking some pretty fancy money, Amos. Wife gone and Sam overseas. I can wait for my money. You see to it that Ace has enough arsenide powder to dust every farm hereabouts. I'll sign for all of them. Claire, where's Don? He's in the house, taking a nap. Are you sick? Oh, no, Dad. Just well, then you listen to me. This is a farm, a working farm. You can run away from a lot of things. You can run away from school, from Janet, from a job, from little worry and hard time. You can even run away from the United States Navy. But there ain't no doctor around here gonna sign any papers saying you're too sick to do your work. I want to see some sweat on you. Because what we're doing around here is all part of the fight. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. General Patton, 7th Army, continued to sweep north, occupying a second axis airfield late yesterday. Now here's County Agent Warren Hepper with the Monroe County Farm Report. While there's no break in sight for our heat wave, about 60 acres have been lost in the Prairie Flats area. Uh, farms in the Marysville vicinity are advised to Daddy, I think it'd be all right, don't you? If I just took myself for a little drive. I mean, it's cooling down some, you know. It just seems like what was working at Culloden, you know, I'm spending the whole summer just locked up inside. All right, all right. If you see anyone, tell them the, them locusts spotted around Prairie Flats. Okay. Keys in the car? Mm -hmm. Did I hear you say they're up to Prairie Flats? Yeah. They come here if we lose this crop. 
We go to Detroit. I'll get a job in a defense plant. Best I ain't paid off my depression debts yet. off limits. You gonna report me? Johnny, I don't see why we can't see each other a little. I mean, who has to know? Janet, I ain't getting married. Not yet. So you better just go on home before your folks find out you're here. I didn't come here to talk about marriage. That's what you say now. Johnny, I thought we meant something to each other. Yeah, something. Not everything. All I want. Hey, did you know you have grease all over your face? What you doing? Trying to fix this compressor so it can dust. Must be awfully important. such a terrible thing? We're not all running on the same schedule, Sissy. It's like clocks. Some are slow, and others run fast. Yet everybody's always wanting the right time. I never thought of it like that. You be patient, honey. Donnie's going to give everybody what's expected of him. Everybody wants him to be as strong as Daddy. Daddy wants that, too, and it just don't seem fair. I made some fresh peach ice cream. Why don't you get out of those wet clothes and go round up your father and Donnie? I love you, Mama. Donnie? What are you doing up this late? Mom made some peach ice cream. I saved you some. I don't know. 
hope you ought to be up this late. You're still fighting. It was for a good cause. Me? You sure I'm a good cause? I'm sure. I don't even know exactly what happened. That wouldn't change how I feel. I had this friend I met down at Pensacola. Artie. Artie McKay. We got to be real good buddies, you know. I, I mean, I never had a friend closer. He was going to be a veterinarian. Like Lloyd Hub. Anyhow, we both did our first solos on the same day. You wrote me about it. You want to start a fight? I wanted to go back and stop Artie's dying, but I couldn't. It, it was making me crazy, like I was some kind of Section 8 or something. What's that? Section 8's what they call it when a fella goes to pieces in the service. I ain't sure I was all that crazy. And suppose it wasn't Artie's dying. Suppose I hauled off and belted the first guy just to prove I wasn't scared to. I scared to get back into the plane. I thought the Navy could force you to fly if they wanted to. Yeah, they, they wanted me to fly again. But nothing ever happened. I, I couldn't. Reckoning the ground those locusts covered yesterday. They could be here in two days, three at the most. Well, don't sound near as bad as it did in 31. Just a few fields here and there. You cried in your sleep last night, Claire. You go a little easier on Donnie. I had a sergeant in the army one time, Claire. I don't think I ever hated a man as bad as I hated him. And yesterday, when I woke Donnie from his nap, I sounded just like that old sergeant when he was chewing me out.
dog. Now, sit back, relax, and prop up your feet while I spin a little country for you. Morning, Claire. Well, what was I supposed to do, Claire? Pat him on the back for going to bed without fixing the compressor? No, you're right, Amos. He should have finished it. What does the farm report say? Nothing we didn't know last night. I'm so scared. Scared? It's just grasshoppers. I, I know, but thinking about so many of them. I know they can't bite me or anything, but... Well, there were these pictures in the encyclopedia, and they made me all goosebumpy. Do you have one of your nightmares, young lady? Kind of. Now, maybe you don't remember, but you met up with Locust once before. She was how old, Claire? Two years old. I got it working. I'll be out for you soon. Just have me a little of that butter with you, please. Kick that thing over once. It's gonna take you a couple hours to do maybe one acre. That'll be one acre won't be turned into hog feed. What's the point? The point is, Donnie, a man that won't try don't need no enemy. He's already beat. Well, it's like pitching hay with a teaspoon. Well, with Ace up there, Dustin, we still got a chance. Kick it off. Your mother's gonna have to make us some kind of mask to wear so that we don't have to breathe all this stuff in. Now, you go tell Mama to start telephoning a special meeting at the church right away. Now hurry up. Donnie, you take this outfit down to the other end of the field there and start working back this way. of this heat busting up. How much head start you need, Ace? Well, I figured to take off at first light. The locusts are sleeping there. Supposing those things should attack, say, uh, in the middle of the afternoon? Well, in that case, I wouldn't be much good to you. If the swarm's a real big one, there's too much risk of them clogging up my air intakes. Ain't we just kidding ourselves? This hopper scare comes off, or we'll all be washed up. Ain't no man ever outwitted a swarm of locusts. Sky's the way. Why don't you just pipe down, Tom? I sure get sick of hearing him blame everything on the Lord. I'm not blaming. Just saying what's in the Bible, in Exodus. For they covered the face of the whole earth, so the land was darkened, and they did eat every herb of the land, and there remained not any green thing through all the land of Egypt. Speaking for myself, this warm comes. I'm leaving. I think you spoke for the most of us. We sure ain't getting nothing done chewing the rag. Well, what do we tell Ace here? Just don't bother Dustin? Well, who's got the money again? We can't not one of us here ever remember one year when we wasn't in debt. Either paying off a new harvester or rebuilding after a flood. We've come through drought, depression, and locusts. We pay our debts, maybe sometimes a little late, but we pay them, cash money. The land always comes through for us, whether to keep us alive or bury our dead. No man can forget that because of some locusts. No man. 
I don't know, Ed. Just now, on the radio, the locusts are at the county line. Five miles. Donnie started spraying. You telephone Ace and let him know right away. How much land did you cover? Maybe an acre. If there was some way to wet these fields down and make this stuff stick. Well, I ain't. How'd your meeting go? Uh, I've known those men all my life. At least as I thought I had. Something's changed in this world. All of a sudden, I, I feel all alone. Even when I'm not. Well, it ain't like there's a depression no more. Plenty of jobs now. Could be a lot of those people would be better off working in the cities. Could be you'd be happier doing that. Is that what you're saying? No, sir, I didn't. But it just don't seem right for you to expect everybody to think just the way you do, that's all. Kick this thing on, let me try it. Those locust swarms are a lot closer than the county line. It'll be dark pretty soon. Not soon enough. the isolated reports of attacks. In Wrightwood, 130 acres. In Twin Boulders, 300 acres. In Prairie Flats, 1,000 acres. Entomologists at the State University have confirmed the plague-like proportion of crop damage. More to follow in the new spring. Now back to the golden town of Montana. Western Union. Yes? Yes. Uh, yes, operator. No, that won't be necessary. Navy Department. It's Sam. Ace's boy. I guess I better call him. No, no, it has to be a regular telegram. You type it out. I'll take it to him. Something wrong? I'm sorry, Ace. You got your watch? Yes, sir. Near six. Yeah, we should have heard him an hour ago. I can be running a cultivator and still hear Ace when he takes off.
don't make sense. He ain't home and he ain't flying. Not like him. Jack, come on, quick! Amos is driving up. Don't suppose he's heard. Amos! Amos! Amos. Telegram last night. Ace's boy is dead. One of them islands. I just come from there, Kelly. Ace took his shotgun and killed himself. This is war. Good luck. Where did 
did you hit these? Oh, well, Marysville. Amos, there ain't nothing left. Nothing green. It's like looking at death. Did you hit any more swarms between here and Marysville? Oh, I thought there was a small one near your place. Yeah, there was. We'll make it, Eric. Amos, my wife's brother has a small machine plant in South Bend, and I was thinking... Eric, the Closser family has lived here for a hundred years. Does a weekly paycheck mean so much to you that you'd give all that up? Eric Closser working for wages? If those locusts come... Amos, if I lose five cents worth of my harvest, that's a nickel I ain't got. I confess I don't know what makes you think you can stand up to a swarm of locusts. Well, that's five gallons, Mr. Carter. That's uh, 90 cents. Amos? Kelly's calling the undertaker up at right with. I spoke to the Reverend Weldon. He'll do the services. That's nice, Tom. Amos, if we don't get some rain, what they has gone. There ain't no hope, is there? You got any suggestions? I'm gonna pray. Yeah, me too, Tom. Clouser phoned me. Ace and Sam. It's hard to accept. Yeah. No. Leave it open, Amos. I'm worried about Sissy. I thought maybe she'd stay in the root cellar if the locusts do come. That'd probably be best. I'd sure welcome one of them sudden cold snaps we're good for about this time of year. You never change, do you? What? This is where you come when I needed you to help me with Ginger having her phone. Also, the time I got mad at you because your grades didn't measure up. You run here a lot, don't you? I heard how Ace killed himself. Yeah, I never took Ace for a coward. Coward? Dad, ain't you ever been lonely? 
scared. I mean, really frightened or something. A man don't tolerate the consequences of fear. If you ran out of sands, you'd starve to death. I figured on dying only once. Can you say the same? Maybe you just don't grieve about things. Or feel about them the way I do. Or the way Ace must have felt about Sam. Do you think what he done was right? Uh, you probably do. You'd do anything to keep from taking a few bumps. Even suicide. Which is just another way of running. Ain't that right, Donnie? Well, ain't it? If you say so. Maybe you started something around here. Things not going to suit you, just no problem. Back off. Shut your eyes. Stick your head in the sand somewhere. Dying or watching your best friend get blown up ain't just a problem. Being alive's a problem. You seem to keep forgetting that. Everybody else around here seems to forget it. You think the whole world begins and ends with your 200 acres? Well, it did for four generations of us and could again if we give it a chance. Maybe I got different ideas about the chances I want to take. You left here and had your chance. What did you do with it? Tell me, what did you do with your chance? I failed. God help me, I failed up. And you know how? By coming back here to you, that's how. Gotta get some rope. Danny can't come with us. My father would kill me if he even knew we were... If he knew how I felt about you. Janet, I don't want to cause you no trouble, but I got to get out of here. Janet, go help your mother. I need a lift out of Burdette. He's still sweet on Janet. Yes, sir, Mr. Wilbur. I am. Donnie, you're nothing. Nothing at all. I ain't much more myself. Just how I can tell. Janet deserves something better. You stay and help your father. You don't know when he's licked. Well, it's too bad that ain't hereditary. Maybe if we can stop them here, we could save the rest of our crops. Amos, I hear them coming. Let's get those torches. Come on.
We're leaving. Donnie, if you still want to come with us, I can talk my dad into it. You see that fire? Yeah. That's our place. He's burning the fields. He's crazy. I can't go. I'll write you long letters. Let him see you smile, just once. You mean put my personal seal of approval on his behavior in the Navy? What do you really know about that? I know how any man would have behaved. No man is any man. Well, what do you expect of me? It's too late. You done run him off. He did his own running, Clara. God only knows he's had enough practice at it. And enough reason. When was the last time you said something good about him? Any man who's too generous with his praise cheapens. Does that mean being too generous with your love cheapens that, too? Now, don't go twisting my words, Claire. When Sissy got scared and ran, you understood that right enough. You showed her your love and understanding. You don't even touch Donnie. You're comparing a 14-year-old girl with a grown man, Claire. Does that mean a man doesn't need love and understanding and forgiveness? Does that mean you don't need those things, too? All right, all right. I'm sorry. It's just hard for a man to admit he's scared. Did you hear what I said, Claire? I heard you, Amos. Ramsden says they ain't no man can outwit a swarm of locusts. No man. That's all I am, Claire. He burned the whole south field. I could smell the fire even in the root cellar. Yeah. Locusts wiped down about a third of the rest of the crop. How do you know? Well, I was just walking around, sort of taking inventory. Dad thinks you're gone for good. I must have picked up his spirit some. Men are peculiar. What? While you were writing home, he sat and read those letters to himself again and again and again. Every night, Donnie. That was before my discharge. You know what I think? I think he gets madder at you because you're a boy. His son. That don't make no sense. Yes, it does. When you think about how he is. Strong, brave, honest. He loves you so much, Donnie, that he wants you to be even better. And when you're not, he gets sad. And he starts worrying that he's done something wrong. In bringing you up, I mean. Better get on back to bed. And don't tell Dad I'm here, all right?
again. You'll come with the sun, sir. That's done. Got to be done.
march to a different beat And those days have left you one by one Lord, it's a struggle with little reward You must fight with your flesh and your pride Some will be broken while others will bend But in the end, all that matters is you try